Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and today we're talking about the default game engine. Now the default game engine is a 2D game engine from King. Yes, that King. And I've actually been a fan of this for quite some time. I've been covering this since basically the day it was released. I even did a full tutorial series on learning the default game engine and I highly recommend it to anyone looking for a 2D game engine. It's, it's a very capable, mobile focused, high performance, Lua powered game engine and I recommend that any of you check it out. We're going to do a quick hands on with it, but today we're talking mostly about the the fact that the fold released their roadmap for where future developments are going to go. So first a little bit about the fold and then a little bit about uh, hands on and then finally a little bit about the roadmap. So if you want to check out the fold, it is available at thefold.com. I'm going to cover that in the linked article as always. So check that out later on if you wish. You can download it for free. It is available on Mac, Windows and Linux. Full functioning uh, 2D game engine and editor with scene editor, called particle editor, code editors, uh, all built in, a Lua debugger, tile map editor. It can target HTML5, Android, iOS, Steam, Facebook Instant Games, Windows, Mac, and Linux. It's a very powerful engine, and I think at that point in time, let's segue over to take a look at the engine. Now, one of the big problems with the engine originally was the fact that your games and projects existed on the cloud. Yeah, so you didn't have them locally. You could export them out, but you needed to use a cloud environment. Environment to, to make them work. Now, thankfully, you can do everything 100% from your local computer. So this works just like you would in Godot or Unity or any other game engine out there now. So that's definitely a nice change. Now, here you can see a bit of how it's organized. Your game is built into a game project, pretty straightforward. You can bring in dependencies and plugins really easy. They have a built-in plugin management system. Uh, you set the various different properties for your game, the global settings like uh, physics, input handling. You can create uh, input bindings so you can have multiple different controller systems. So once you've got that, you can set up, you know, um, this key or this button on the joystick or whatever, all mapped to this controller. Uh, and then on top of that, everything is organized into collection. So here you can see a collection. A collection can be thought of as either like an entity or a level. They're kind of naturally organized in those ways. So here you can see how this game is structured. Here is the main collection. The main collection here consists of a level collection and two game objects. One game object is the uh, main for running the game itself, and the other one is the player. So here we see, uh, for example, the level that we're bringing in. So here it's showing everything assembled in that collection, but here is just the collection for the level. So here is your game level. This is from the uh, tutorial. I'll link to this as well. So this is one of those things you can use to get started with it. It's kind of an organization of things. So you see here we got the background. The background consists of, it's all component or composition based. So it has a sprite attached to it. So you can add several things in here. So we could add in another component. So we've got various different things that we could add in. So we could add a sound in, a 3D model, a factory for creating other objects, or you can do it by file, or we could create a game object. Um, so here's the, again, the background is composed of sprite, background trees are composed of sprites, coins are composed of sprites and so on. Uh, you can create these, these kind of entities and kind of use them as you would like a prefab in other environments. Um, and then in this case, so we've got this collection is built up of all of the things that go together to create a level. You've got a uh, physics engine built in here as well and all that stuff that you would expect from a full-blown 2D game engine. So let's head on back over again to the main. So you see there's the level that's being brought in. So the level is being displayed, but it is coming in as a collection. But we've also got main and player as a game object. So the player here, so I opened up the game object, you'll see it is, consists of a collision definition. So you see the box for the collision around this guy the script that is controlling it, and then the sprite. Now the sprites can be uh, fully animated. So here we see we've got idle animation, run animation, jump animation, and so on, all available. Uh, you got animation previewers and editors in here, an atlas file, uh, which is, you can see a collection of sprites. It can automatically create these atlases for you. And then finally, if we head back over to the hero, you're gonna see we also have the script that controls it. And finally, we get into there. So we got a full-blown editor built in here for Lua script. You've got debuggers and everything else. If you've never used Lua before, I'm actually a big fan of the Lua programming language. It's one of the things I highly recommend people start with. And then on top of that, so you've got your, your code editor with code completion, cult, syntax highlighting, and debugging, which is kind of nice. So we can actually, um, we can come up here and we can do things we can attach, we can set breakpoints, we can jump in, jump out, simulate different devices and so on. Um, but the cool thing with the way that the fold works is its coding model is all designed around sending and receiving messages. So you see here when we run the initialization callback function, we post an acquire input focus message to ourself. And that then causes this guy to handle input handling and so on. You're gonna see it various other places. Um, let me see if I've got another message handler. So a lot of these are gonna be called on message. So here on message received, we're checking to see 
If it was a contact point received, in which case we call off and handle in this function. So it uses this messaging based system and all of the things that can be done by sending messages across and receiving messages in your own code. It's a very elegant way of handling game logic. I've always liked that about Lua. It takes a little bit, sorry, not Lua, about uh, the default game engine. It takes a little bit of while to get used to it, but once you've got it down, it's a very intuitive system. The nice thing is also, it is pretty well documented. So head on over here. It's all online for the documentation. So if you want to check it out, but we've got examples tutorials, manuals. Again, everything we are looking at right now is actually uh, available for you to download. And that's a nice time to segue back over here. So once again, if you want to check out the fold, it is available at the fold.com. Now, sadly, even though it is multiple platform supported and the editor works great, uh, it is not a completely open source project. They've got some things available on GitHub, but the project itself is not open source. So um, the news we've got here, so this is the roadmap of where they plan to go with the default game engine. And they've kind of broke it down by um, certain things. Thing. So first off, we have iOS continuation. They're going to continue to support iOS. But one of the problems with iOS is they announced that they're going to be deprecating OpenGL. So the way that they're going to be implementing this is via Metal. Now, Metal is iOS's native implementation of the low-level graphics. And there's a product out there called Molten VK, which basically can cause uh, Vulkan code to run on Metal devices. So that's where they're going. So in 2019, they added a new Vulkan backend, graphics backend, and they're going to be supporting uh, iOS devices going forward off of Metal. They're also going to be supporting sign in with Apple. Um, will require that apps that authenticate or set up user accounts must sign in with Apple. They're going to have support for that by the deadline of June 30th, 2020. Uh, storyboard launch screens in Xcode support. Uh, on the Android side of things, they're going to have uh, billing. Google Billing as a service that you sell digital content on Android. They will add support through the new API via the uh, in-app purchase extension. Google Play game services support is being added. Uh, Android app bundle uh, publishing format includes all your games, compiled code resources and such on. Um, they're going to be supporting that. Google Play Instant. Google Play Instant is a, a way of basically creating a version of your game that people can just try out immediately, and they're going to have support for that. Their HTML5 platforms, and this is actually one of the things I really like about the Fold, for targeting mobile and HTML5, it is a very low overhead uh, game engine. It, it does really good HTML5 support, and they're going to focus on increasing the performance and reducing the application size. Um, we will, when possible, update to new versions of mscripten and WebAssembly to achieve this. On the desktop side of things, um, on desktop, our only focus, identified focus is to add the ability to run the engine loop while the editor is in the background. Editor will focus mainly on performance, stability improvements in the editor in terms of new features. We have identified the following. Uh, so we want to have improved 3D support. That's one of the things that's happened with the Fold recently for support for 2.5D games or bringing 3D models into your 2D game. The uh, Fold has been getting more and more support for that kind of stuff there. So they're going to continue to improve that. So we're going to make it easier to work with and place 3D models in a collection. Many other improvements to be made in scene navigation while working in 3D. Auto tiling, so uh, they did some, well, we did some minor improvements to the tile maps in 2019. Uh, we're so far left, so far left out auto tiling. Auto tiling is really nice because it allows you to make like smooth transition between different tile types. So for example, you could have a water type and a sand type, and you could actually basically have it create beach types by transitioning between the two. I don't know how they're going to be implementing it. There's a couple of ways. One of the most common is a set called Wang tiles, and then there's sometimes it's called auto tile, but there's a couple of different ways that this can be implemented. It will be interesting to see which choice they go there. Uh, they uh, plan to expand the existing system for editor scripts to allow for more complex operations. And we will look at how to customize the UI and or add new UI widgets using editor scripts. GUI layout and templates, system GUI and templates um, were on one or both involve value overrides is fairly complex and hard to work with code and maintenance perspective. Plan to review the system and possibly simplify it. Uh, from an engine side of things, there are some things they're looking at, such as sound threading. Uh, physics decoupling, this is kind of one of the negatives right now, is the physics hertz rate or the rate that the physics is running at is the same as the game loop. They want to make it separately so you could potentially uh, do your physics simulation at 60 while running your game at 30 or vice versa. Uh, spine is an extension, so I think yeah, the current one is a native spine support. They're going to move that out into an extension. Physics, same thing. So they're going to move Box 2D and Bullet 3D out from native and into um, as extensions. Live update, uh, we will have the 
uh, used in several scenarios. Da, da, da. We plan to deliver the most critical improvements in 2020. So basically, an improved live update. Mesh component, uh, the custom mesh component will be released in Q2 of 2020. And as mentioned earlier, they worked on Vulkan on Android. It will be used by default on newer device and on iOS. It is going to ultimately be using Molten VK. Uh, but that Vulkan renderer was, as they said, created in 2019. But it's going to become the primary way for Android going forward. And um, Apparently, iOS is going to use Molten VK because, once again, iOS is nuking uh, their uh, implementation of OpenGL. And then, uh, build server for native extensions will be open sourced in Q2 2020 to allow developers to build locally or set up their own build servers to cut down on the dependencies to the default provided build service. That's even nicer. So, a lot of the functionality that was previously in the cloud before you could only create projects in the cloud, now you have to still submit them to do the cloud builds. That is also going to be changed, open sourced, and going to be able to run locally. So, that is what is in the immediate future for the default game engine. Again, it is an engine I like quite a bit. If you liked that tutorial I showed, you this guy right here uh, this platforming demo so let's go back to the level this guy right here it is available uh, on their uh, github along with a number of different other examples and so on nice thing is actually if you go to the fold they've got an entire marketplace of assets and resources and such I'll head back over here right now so if you go to the asset section that is actually where that comes from but the asset portal has tons of different things in here uh, that is actually from I think I actually got it from template projects right here. So that tutorial is available right there, but it is also hosted um, on their GitHub right here under the MIT license. So if you wanna go ahead, you can simply download the uh, fold, create an, or, or import this project from file and you can get started that way. And it does have a pretty good example. It's, it's a pretty complete game. It shows you how to transition between scenes, um, uh, how to load a level, how your hero is created. And then we kind of get into some of the other stuff like, so here's, B, so we got an atlas of B images, and there's the images that control that atlas. Um, I imagine we have an input map defined for us. So if I go back here, uh, where where did you put input? So come here, you got your input bindings, and this shows how you can map your input back to control. So have you know on screen mouse keyboard game and so on all control uh you know by the same set of uh, input maps pretty common in game engines these days and you got your fonts being handled in here another one going on there um yeah so if you want to check it out the platformer example is a good full-fledged example and then once again you can get into the code and you can start looking at the uh, message passing aspects of it and uh, yeah, yeah, it's pretty straightforward, pretty clean, pretty well organized. So if you want to get in here and figure out how things go, again, here you can see the code for handling the, uh, the player's movement in the world and so on. Great place to start in their platformer demo. And I will link that with the link down below. But as I mentioned earlier on, it is actually available from the assets portal along with a bunch of other stuff. So again, if you want to say a, a replacement camera, you've got them right here. And then there's an extension system that is built directly into uh, default, which makes it very easy to extend the engine on a whole. All right, so that is it. That is the default game engine. As I mentioned earlier on, I actually have a step-by-step -step tutorial available on Dev Game. I will link that in the linked article down below as well. So if you want to get started with default, I got you covered. I also have a video that I did on this guy. And I will, of course, link that down below as well. All right, so that is it. That is the default game engine, a little bit of a hands-on time and a look at where they are going in the future. Have you checked out the default game engine? If not, uh, why? If so, what did you think? Let me know those things in the comments down below, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.